I don't know, look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows the time at 10.09. It does not. It's 13.36. You lie. Aha, we found a fault in the game. Tell everyone. Tell everyone. It's important. The hands seem to be still. It's apparent the clock doesn't work. Should have read it all, Mark. Where are we? We're in Frit. No, I meant where are we on a larger scale? As mankind or as a nation or as a mankind? In a good place? She rubs her face thinking. I mean, science is doing great and this radio computer thing seems to be kind of big. I don't know. She shrugs and folds her arms back. Or folds her magazine back. I won't bother you with this nonsense anymore. But I got XP for that. Cool. Uh, there's no fridge here. Yes. Um, let's see. Convince Kim there's a sexy dark mystery in this twist in this case. Let's try it. Success! Get in! What if you did it? Did what? The hangman? Yes, you killed him. And then, as part of the plan, you drowned out the memory. Maybe this is why your chest feels so hollow. You did an awful thing and you can't even bring yourself to acknowledge it. Are you sure you would have had the strength to take down a hardened mercenary? You're not in the best shape. Um, I need to discard this idea. This is, this is clearly nonsense. I may be the murderer. I killed the man and then tricked myself into forgetting about it. I drunk myself into oblivion. No, he wasn't here seven days ago when it happened. He was only here three days ago. So, ah, discard that. Um... You seem to be following me. Nothing, just an observation. You have a, he's looking for the right words, a distinctive way of walking. If I were to walk in front of you, we would surely collide. What do you mean distinctive? I hope you don't take this the wrong way. It's just a collegial observation. In the 57th, we call it the Jamrock Shuffle. Officers from Jamrock's 41st Precinct tend to move a bit erratically. How's that? They say it's a scene clearing technique developed by one of your lieutenants for gathering evidence. It's erratic, yet thorough. Prioritizes containers. Uh, okay then. He simply nods. Leave. So, that refrigeration thing did not help. I don't think. We didn't get any... Well, maybe just look at the tasks. It might give me a clue in the tasks section. We've made some remarkably lucky rolls. Fridge the victim's body. Ask around about fridge. The kids. We've got to go and ask the kids. I should have known it would be Kuno. We go back to Kuno. We go back to the shop. I need to buy at least one healing thing for morale. For fear of uh, getting killed. After some epic big dialogue. Uh, we need this. Continue. Give me Commodore Red. That doesn't help. Vodka. Potent Pilsner. Cigarettes. These aren't any good. They're, they're not the right one. There's got to be... Is there nothing else? Is that the only place I can buy from at the back up there? I thought there was something else in this thing. Oh, that's not good. I could, I could die at this point. Do you sell any under-the-counter vices? Morale. 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 That's not good. Uh, let's see. No, she doesn't sell anything else. Oh, crap. I guess it's going to be a case of uh, let's have everything quick saved. I can... If I can get through the day... I'm going to be fine, because I can rest and get it all back. Um, which gives me some leeway for tomorrow. I've got enough money for the rent at last. For one day's rent. Oh, hang on. I haven't sold it, given it to him by 8 o'clock. Then uh, we're screwed. Or is it 9? Might be 9. I'll go and hand over the rent. I'm not looking forward to this grind for the rent every day. But I guess if I follow the story, it should you. deal with that. Yep, 20 real for the night. Excellent. We level up as well. Perfect. Good. You got, a, you got the room for the night. But remember, you'll need another 20 tomorrow. Well, we're halfway there. So that's done. We've got lots of 
stuff to talk to these people about. But let's see if we can get this um, this fridge, this body fridge quest done. And I'll have to see where I'm going to spend that skill point. Oh, can I? Mm, I was going to look at the tires again, but I don't think there's anything to look at. I need to talk to her. Kuno, my friend. Fuck, there's Kuno here. I need a fridge to stash the body. Good thing you asked the Kuhnmeister, he nods, looking, uh, trying to look older. Kuno knows a fridge, perfect for freezing those things. I thought you would. Where is it? Bacon man's in a rush, but what's in it for the Kuno? He crosses his arms. What's the return on Kuzo's investment? A corpse-free yard? Don't you have civic pride? Uh, medium, convince the Kuno to spill the beans. Oh, it's 83. I've got buds with Kuno. This is going to work fine. Yes. By, uh, by killing in his territory, someone has openly challenged Kuno. It's in his best interest to put them in their place. Some arrogant shit thinks he can kill in, in the Kuno's kingdom without asking the Kuno first. That sounds like lawlessness to me. A dark flame smoulders in Kuno's eyes as he ponders your argument, wordless, like kings do. This outlaw's fate is in your hands. Let's make an example of him. Help me locate him using fridge body technology. All right, Kuno hears you. See that shit house over there? He points to the collapsed building with the bookstore. A cold comes over you as you glance behind him at the crumbling colossus there, casting a shadow on you. Yes, I see it. The big tall one behind you? You gotta get in that shit, he points again. In there, deep. What do you mean, in there, deep? Check the basement, pig. Don't you know anything? The kid rolls his eyes. Always check the basement, recon style. I think that's where we have to go with this key. We have to leave a door open for someone, so it, it kind of ties in with this body thing. There's a giant fridge down there. <laughs> F Gimple fit, no problem. He nods confidently. It looks like a white bear or some shit. Try not to piss yourself when you see it. A white bear? A polar bear? How do I get in the building again? Through the bookstore. You gotta beg the book, bitch. Used to be you could get in there through the doorbell, jam that shit. Book bitch, change that. Kuno doesn't beg, so Kuno doesn't go in there anymore. Beg the book bitch? Yeah, book bitch, beggar. You stupid or something? He means the bookstore, we have to ask. He checks his notes. Pleasance is the mother of the little girl peddling books on the plaza. We have to ask Pleasance in the store. Impressing note keeping, Lieutenant. See, the clad gets it, he says with a nod. Listen to your four-eyed friend. Thanks, Kuno. You didn't hear it from Kuno, pig. He looks at you seriously. But don't forget where you heard it from. Kuno owns you now, pig. You're Kuno's property. I do want to buy Kuno's pants. That was a massive boost over the rubbish things I've got. I need some money. Where am I going to get some money? Um, The pawn shop? I've got some stuff I can maybe sell in the pawn shop. Let's keep going. I'm running around with my... Oh, what's this guy? A working class woman. Hmm. <laughs> you see a sturdy woman humming to herself. She seems to be browsing books. A good one. Point at the book. Yes, hello. Yes, hello, she nods. Her attention fully focused on reading. Who are you? Me? No one. I'm just a working class woman. <laughs> just a working class woman. She doesn't really want to be disturbed that much. If she's such a working-class woman, why isn't she working? Not all the time. Right now, I'm browsing books. She... Even a working-class woman needs something to read. Good, good. It Not... is. I'm a policeman. I know you are. Oh, you know I am? Everyone can see that. The rectangles. And the cape. Do you need the help of a policeman? What with? She tries hard to focus on the bookstand. Um... Maybe your husband is missing? My husband? No, he's not. So where could he be? I don't know. At home now? Out drinking with his friends? Working? Where is this going, officer? So what I'm hearing is, you don't really know where your husband is. <laughs> yes, but... She looks around and takes a deep breath, a little annoyed. I don't really need to know where my husband is. Not all the time. Wouldn't you like to? No. She looks you straight in the eye. Her right foot is tapping nervously. 
I can totally help you find your missing husband. Why are we still talking about this? I haven't lost my husband. Maybe your cockatoo is missing. <laughs> I don't mean to disrespect, sir, but you are being a bit of a cockatoo here. For what it's worth, I agree, but cockatoos can't be stopped when they get like this. It's better to indulge them at this point. Uh, Ma'am, I'm asking about your cockatoo. Is it missing? I don't even have a cockatoo, and guess what? It's a trap. Never say what. All right, cockatoo is not missing. I just wanted to make sure. Great. She turns attention back to the book stand. Just one, one more question. What did you mean by me being a cockatoo? Nothing. Go read up on them if you're so interested. There's a great book in the bookstore. Uh, maybe you should. What if the cockatoo is your astral captain or your heraldic bird? Ah, some ideas. Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. Thanks for the tip. Wonderful. The store is open. Maybe your children are missing. No, absolutely not. Her words come out quick as gunshots. Okay, so where are they? Are you a policeman or a nanny? She definitely is disturbed by now. I police whatever I want. Where are they? They're not missing, sir. You know where they are. They're at home. Smoking. Giving the ladder of vices a chance. They're at home, right? Smoking cigarettes? What? <laughs> That's just... My daughters are perfectly fine. They're with their friends down in Jamrock. There's nothing to worry about. They're almost grown up now anyway. They're past the age they need me protecting them from everything now. I'm afraid the danger is now greater than ever. Tell me, how old are they? My youngest girl, Jolie, is just shy of 16. Jenny is turning 18 next month, but we shouldn't even be talking about them. And can you describe me their appearance? Any features that stand out? Something to make identifying a little easier? Why do you need to know this? Haven't I repeatedly told you they're not missing? That they're in Jamrock, safe and well, at some stupid party? Did someone say party? You could use a party. Hunt it down. Uh, let's see. It's for the investigation. I'm trying to be professional. There is no investigation here. I can tell you that. She picks up a book and tries to concentrate. A flock of seabirds pass by. Watch her browse books. Her hands move over the book covers. The tips of her fingers look rough, stained with yellow. It seems like she spent a lot of time at work, smoking. That's all for the moment. I'll let you leave. The woman before you nods and returns to her reading. That was a very useful and informative section that will definitely help us with the investigation. A party. Hmm. I shall make a mental note of that one. Okay. We are going to beg to go down to the basement, which is currently locked, isn't it? You see a tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing books. She fiddles with a pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the strange cage like a trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks and straws. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. From the looks of it, this is a traditional Seminese ward meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses and other supernatural scourges. And who are the Seminese? Inhabitants of the Ile de Phantom, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fishhead charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Pull open the curtains. Just as you're about to pull open the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. A hand has closed around the pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. Parapsychologically, the curly curly. Speaking, we're done if you decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. Hmm. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? I've heard a fridge there that I need. Everybody suddenly needs something from me. She waves her hands angrily. Leave the curtains be. It's what, it's what it wants. Is this about the curse? That's why you're afraid. No, it's just a storeroom for the employees. I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Uh, okay. Ma'am, this is different. I'm a police officer. I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. 
She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. All right, I'll think about it for a while. Thank you, the shopkeeper lets out a loud sigh. Let's just talk about this first, all right? There's no reason for you to venture into the unknown. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. Lies. Rip them open, we say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust, hang before you, as if taunting you. Ignore the curtains for now. We need a book about cockatoos. I feel that that might be important. Storekeep. What board? Oh, leave. Not board games. Not board games at all. Uh, the muscle, the muscle man books. The man from Hemdall, a very popular series of adventure novels. She looks at the books with some disdain. They're awfully immoral and violent books. Why are they so popular? Because they're awfully immoral and violent, I suspect. Blood and violence, scantily clad women, epic narratives, all these mystical things he encounters. They're bound to grab those with little imagination and nothing to do. That doesn't that sound like something I'm interested in. I don't want the Hemdall books. I might need them later. What's in the window? Gift books and molten candy. We need a book on cockatoos. There must be something in here somewhere. What about in here? Crime novels. These shelves are overburdened with books from the same series. You see the name Dick Mullen over and over. That was going to be me, right? A couple of spook novels hide amidst all the detective books. Thrilling tales of spycraft and daring do. Leave. We'll come back if we need them. There must be something on pets somewhere. Quaint picture brochure. Very colourful. Uh, Tome of fascist magic. Shelf of biographies. If I need to, if I need to know, I'll come back. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. That's weird. What's that? A map wall. Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Inchilindi, a map of Rivishol, and a map of Martinez. Look at Rivishol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It's the River Esperant. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the centre, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up to the, me the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivachol East. And to the west, Curon. It's somewhere to live, not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. That's where that's where we're a police officer from. Then Faubourg, it's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City, it's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait, there it is. North of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Great Arivashol Industrial Harbour. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Coal City, to be honest. No, Coal City is worse, a charred limb. Rain falls on its slick black streets, and then there's the burnt-out quarter in the heart of Jamrock. Is it cold in this bookstore, or is it just you? No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, the world. You're still alive. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer, the map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore, and besides, you could scarcely afford them. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing? It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. The place does not look like a successful tourist map, does it? What happened then? They didn't get far, for some reason, a shame as the, the project never got going. It would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. All these ruins are bad for business. Steal it? 28%. I'll fail that. Uh, I want to buy the map of Martinez. Excellent. We should have a map now. Leave. Oh, I should maybe have looked at the map of Martinez. Interact. The map of Martinez. Interact. The worn map features a patchwork grid of streets of Martinez with directions to appropriately touristy locations. Year 48 resides in the upper right corner. Trace a path through the grid. Your finger moves through the various streets across the Rue de Saint-Gislaine. 
Rue de saint Sisper. I feel like I should be a French native speaker playing this game. Over saint Brune and Martinez North. Finally coming to a halt on the spot where you are currently standing, although a map gives no such indication itself. For a more detailed view of the map, go to your journal, then the map tab. Put the map away. Excellent. Excellent. Escape. Map. We got it. Excellent. This is where the game is going to take place. So that um, the punch clock payphone. What's that? The interface challenging. A sleeping dock worker. Are these are these areas we can go to? Okay, and it's got tasks on. Interesting. That is quite interesting. Um, anything else? We're still looking for this cockatoo thing, right? Another boring book. Shelf of paranormal books. This bookstore is not strictly about crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. There's always a wide range of paranatural literature. Uh, look through the shelf. Amidst the various books, you find one written by someone named Matthias W. Dundas. It's about wholeness, unity, and balance. These three things are very important to the working class mind. Uh, the point of the book, and many others on the shelf, is to give people medicinal advice on situations where they don't have access to paid healthcare. How does that work? It serves platitudes while also telling everyone that traditional medicine, the kind people don't have access to and which costs more than this book, is garbage and would only give you cancer anyway without even curing your cold or anything. Wholeness, unity, balance, on the other hand, can basically take care of anything, though it is important to note when it's up to your mind to heal yourself, then it's because of your mind that you're ill in the first place. Does the book say anything else? The book features chapters on topics such as how to find magnesium, it even lists plants you can harvest magnesium from, how to continue drinking if you're an alcoholic who has destroyed his liver, and there's even a chapter on the ancient Ceres tradition of using duck gallbladder preservatives to treat and prevent sexually transmitted diseases. Pre and post factum apply, nothing worth buying. This is just mundane garbage. What's even paranatural about this? Find something truly otherworldly. Success. The throbbing in your head increases with every passing moment you gaze at the shelf. Suddenly, as if out of nowhere, a small green book becomes apparent. The title of it reads, Medicinal Purposes of the Pale. What's the pale? The book contains very little explanation on the matter. This knowledge seems to be taken for granted. What's the book about? The book contains descriptions of various pseudo-scientific therapies, alternative medicines, and folk remedies involving the pale, also known as <coughs> le territoire. What is le territoire? What's the pale? You guys, any idea? What? It recommends vigorously swatting one's naked body with a venic or hand broom made from the leafy twigs of a young birch tree from the near pale. Sounds painful. It is supposedly invigorating and good for the circulation. What else? Uh, it also recommends consuming distilled spirits like vodka or whiskey that have been aged in the pale. Readers are instructed to cover these jars in a shallow hole just inside the pail and leave them there for 30 to 60 days depending on the potency desired. And what does that do? Among other benefits, it's alleged to restore a damaged liver to perfect health. I should probably get my hands on some of that. What else is there? For general health and well-being, readers are encouraged to take regular strolls through the pail through a sidebar cautions, though a sidebar cautions readers to limit each stroll to less than an hour. These strolls promise to cleanse the mind of worries and the body of toxins Especially if <clears throat> the perambul perambulator performs this ritual in the nude. Nudity figures prominently in a number of these prescriptions. This is exactly what you need. I don't know. I don't want to be the party pooper, but this pale territory sounds sort of dangerous. Maybe you shouldn't walk in it naked. Huh. Anything else of note? Um, I certainly don't need cures for men who are struggling to perform their marital obligations. You close the book and return it to its place on the shelf. Um, I want to buy this medicinal purposes of the pale. Indeed, she mumbles, staring at the book for a moment. Something about that book does seem to have spoken to you. Excellent. What books are these? No browsing in that shelf, she narrows her eyes. That wisdom is not for free. Can't have you end up like opening a police store next door and stealing my customers. So we didn't find a book about um, cockatoos then. But I think we have a task too, don't we? Tasks. Uh, let's see. We didn't find about the music. Specialist Borscht we haven't done. 
the apartment door. Oh, the door is behind the greenhouse in the yard. Okay. We need to look at that. That's not the door into this basement then. Okay. Fridge the victim's body. Find your heraldic bird. The working class woman said you're a bit of a cockatoo. What if it's true? Go read up on cockatoos in the bookstore. Maybe you'll discover something. Uh, okay, where is the books? Where is the cockatoo bit? Biographies? Anything of note in this shelf? The woman hums to herself. The greatest innocence. Yes, most certainly. It's an important educational tool delving into the depths of history, religion, and their relation to innocentic power. Great. I don't need to know anymore. What about this one? I feel like I'm missing out here. Uh, what's all this crime fiction? Crime, robberies, murders, even sexual crimes. We're fortunate to have Dick Mullen and his stories to sort all that out. You're a police officer, apparently. You should buy all of those. They really do teach a person how to be a proper detective. I like the look of that. Look through the display of books. Crime fiction is a disgrace. An asinine misrepresentation of the physical attributes and the arduous everyday work of actual police officers. These books greatly overstate the excitement of police work, glossing over how long it takes to actually follow up on leads and eliminate dead ends. What's more, they completely ignore the psychological hardships of year after year, coming into contact with people during the worst days of their lives. Not to mention all of the stress this work creates upon the officer's family. Detective fiction just doesn't tell the truth at all. Now, would you like a list of the books found on the shelf? Sure thing. You see, Dick Mullen on the job, Get Me Mullen, The Stalwart Adventures of Richard P. Mullen, Dick Mullen and the Murder in the Orchard, The Sordid Affair of Dick Mullen. Oh, okay, let's let's stop. Let's just stop. Leave. Uh, enough. <laughs> I'm too tired to do that. Um, I was expecting a book on cockatoos. Unless this is a separate one here. This could be a separate one, actually. The Man from Helldale. No, it's not. And this is board games. What board games do you keep? Uh, Viticulturist... Uh, God. No, okay. Wait, what? Who are you going to play board games with? Do you have friends and family? Do I have friends? Look at the lieutenant. Are you actually friends or just colleagues sewn together by circumstance? Uh, yes, kids, friends, chicks. I have all those. Then you're a lucky man, officer. Children are the greatest of treasures. She fiddles with a pendant, thinking. Leave. Okay, I, I can't find anything about cockatoos in here. I really Welcome don't. Welcome to crime, romance, and plot. Yes, we know this. And Bef please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. So, are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Oh, I can ask about the cockatoos here. Okay. A book about cockatoos. There should be one upstairs, right next to the shelf of biographies. I looked. There wasn't. The girl outside mentioned this place is cursed. Cursed? Who said that? Annette? She blinks. I'll have a word with her. This place is not cursed. It has a robustly magnetic energy. Good for commercial activity. My business is thriving, sir. What in God's name is she talking about? Um, I was told there's a huge fridge in the building cellar. Can you lead me there? A fridge? She fidgets with a pendant. No, I don't know anything about a fridge. Aren't you interested in books? She nods at the bookshelves. For whatever reason, she's lying to you about the fridge. Seems like you have to find your own way to the cellar. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you, it's just a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. If it's just a storage room, then why does it have a Seminese ward protecting it? It's just for decoration, she wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile. Then something breaks. Okay, fine. It's because this place is cursed, just like Annette said. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to a pendant. Hearing success. Hosts of hosts, she prays. Guard me in my honest business venture from the curse that lurks behind the curtains. How does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around in the dimly lit store. The curse... It's so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. A voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. 
She peers at the curtains again. Didn't didn't that curtain just move? Ah, and it mentioned that the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the cocoa demons feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie, lingering presence, as if I was unwanted here. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I've contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Seminese mediators. They provided me with the wards. She nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building, even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this? She holds a pendant in her palm. Its ochre heart glistens under the lights. No, it's a special Hymian amulet. Blessed by desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. Well, it kind of works. There are numerous spells cast through the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. She nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans, that doesn't sound like... Uh, that sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Okay, would you like me to take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away. Leave the spirits be so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case for calls for? A paradetective. Drama. Convince her to let you investigate the doomed commercial area. Yes. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Show her what world-class perfidy looks like. Madam, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? She looks sceptical. Don't think I've seen charlatans. Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm going to go with that one. She shudders. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... Hey now, hey, hey, hey. You need the booze to focus, all right? The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. 